Well, hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Johnny and you're watching Hillbilly Modeling. Now, this is going to be video part two of our ICM U-Boat uh, Type 27B Late, the Sea Hund, in uh, 172nd scale. And in this video, we're going to be doing the painting. So we're going to prime it and paint it and uh, put our decals on. And we're going to wrap this thing up. So uh, you guys hang tight. Let's jump down to the bench and get started. So when it comes to painting our little sub here, here's the materials I'm going to be using. Some uh, painter's mask tape, a uh, piece of card. Uh, we have some um, uh, double stick tape and a uh, uh, one of those craft sticks, a white craft stick. And we're going to use that to prep everything for painting. So the plan here is to use the sub's mounting base uh, <laughs> to hold the sub. That way my fingers aren't in the way, but as you can see, it's pretty small. Uh, so we're going to put some double stick tape just on the bottom surface there. And here we're just going to take and figure out how big of a piece. We don't need very much. Now this double stick mounting tape is pretty strong, so <laughs> we're not going to need a whole lot of it. Now, one of the problems that you have is trying to get the backing tape off these things. So I'm just using the edge of my scissors there to kind of curl it up. And that helps me uh, get that off. Now I'm just going to mount it in the center of this craft stick. That way my fingers aren't in the way and I can get the airbrush in closer to the uh, bottom of the sub when we go to paint. You can see it's not going to come off. And now we can just stick the sub right onto the mounting base there. And it fits nice and snug, so we don't have to worry about the uh, sub falling off. <laughs> At least I hope it doesn't fall off. <laughs> Next up, we're going to take some of this painter's mask tape. Now, this is the purple kind. And I'm just going to roll it up into a, uh, uh, a little double-sided piece there. So we'll need, need two of those. We're going to stick it to the cardstock we got right there. And that way we can just stick our submarine, our, our submarines, <laughs> our, our torpedoes for our submarine on there so that we can get those primed up. And you can make up a second card too for uh, painting the other side. So the first paint we're going to use will be this Vallejo Surface Primer. This is the German Panzer Gray, and, and it's a German sub, so <laughs> that'd be a good primer for it. And here we can see we have it all primed up. This gives us a good chance to inspect those seams and also look at those areas that we filled, make sure everything's okay. Quick look here at our painting schematic. Uh, I want to draw your attention to the torpedo. As you can see here, uh, the warhead is painted, uh, I think it's called engine block gray. Um, we'll, we'll look at that in a second. But the position of it is kind of important because we can use that as an index point. Uh, when we go to mount our torpedoes. Now when it comes to the instructions paint guide here, you can see that it's just in Model Master. <laughs> and of course Model Master is uh, defunct now. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to match up those colors as best we can to whatever it is that we, <laughs> we think that the sub should actually look like. So that's, that's kind of, that's the hillbilly way of doing it. And that's, that's what we're going to do. So using our painting guide as a uh, reference for where the end of the torpedo actually goes on the sub, and that would be to that second rib from the mounting point there, I think. Uh, I'm just going to measure that out, and it looks like it's about 18 millimeters. So we're going to take and mask that off at 18 millimeters from the tip of the torpedo. And we're just going to leave this in the... Uh, the Panzer Gray, uh, which is the primer that we used. And that'll also be uh, the dividing line uh, between the two colors that we're going to use on our torpedo to uh, assist us when it comes time to mount the torpedoes. So now all we got to do is kind of shield the rest of that uh, warhead uh, from overspray when we go to paint the body of the torpedo itself. And here I'm just using that purple mask tape to do that. It comes off really easy and I'll probably put another band of tape around it to hold it on later. So here I've cut a, uh, a card. It's just a large index card to fit around the conning tower. 
So when we go to do some pre-shading, we're not getting it all over the uh, lower section of the uh, sub. Now when it comes to our pre-shading, I'm going to use this pale gray. Now this is craft paint. You know how I like craft paints. <laughs> and uh, we're just going to mix it up for our airbrush. And here I'm going to use that uh, card that we cut. That's going to protect uh, the uh, lower portion of the hull from the conning tower. And hopefully. <laughs> and uh, we're going to do some pre-shading around the top of it. And I am having some issues here with it rocking back and forth but you know sometimes you just got to go with what you got and we're just going to do the top edges here lighten it up there at that particular edge try not to get too much into the center and then I'm just going to use the center fill method here and for you guys that build airplanes uh, you're very familiar with this type of uh, pre-shading and we're just going to do the center of those panels. Now I'm just going to concentrate on the upper hull. Uh, we're not going to do anything on the lower hull because that would remain basically darker. Uh, so we're just going to do, I'm doing the blisters here. And we'll also go in and do these panels towards the rear and the spine uh, on the aft section as well. And we're going to catch these uh, stabilizers and our diving planes. Just kind of bring out that just a little bit. And this goes pretty quick, as you can imagine, because this is a very, very small sub. And it doesn't have to be all that dark. It looks pretty good. Now, I do come back here and just catch that top edge there of our conning tower and shield. So we're going to try to do just a little bit of splotchy uh, pre-shading here on our torpedoes. Try to add just a little bit of uh, visual interest <laughs> on our torpedoes so that they're not all one, uh, the body's not one single color. Okay, so when uh, it comes time to uh, mix up our paint for the, uh, the actual top coat, uh, we're going to mix up a medium gray. I'm just using uh, Anita's acrylic paint here. This is craft paint, uh, water-based. going to use a little bit of the black and the white to get us a medium gray. And then I'm going to add, I think it was about four drops of the Aegean blue. And that'll just give us a slightly more bluish color. Say a blue-gray. And of course, we thin that with the uh, Vallejo uh, uh, acrylic thinner, just so that it will flow through the airbrush nicely. And here you can see we're laying on that color now. And since it's gray over gray, uh, it's going to develop pretty quick. So we don't need a whole lot of this color. And we just want to keep spraying, just, just like uh, doing aircraft or any other model. Uh, you don't want to totally obliterate all your all your uh, pre-shading. And you can see me just going over it and, and let that color kind of develop out. And always stop right before you think you need one more coat. <laughs> so next up, uh, we need to paint our torpedoes. So I've chosen this metallic paint here. Now this is the charcoal gray and mixed uh, for the... Uh, uh, airbrush of course using the acrylic thinner and we're just going to put some light coats on and it doesn't look like it's developing very fast <laughs> which uh, I kind of probably mixed it a little bit thin but we'll just go ahead and uh, paint these torpedoes up in, in this and the same method uh, we want to make sure that we don't obliterate everything that we've done in our pre-shading and just kind of switch between the two torpedoes, giving the paint time to set up uh, between coats. So I think this metallic charcoal gray will give us uh, a, a nice contrast uh, between the paint on the sub and then the torpedoes as well. And then of course, that moment 
when uh, we do that little reveal when we get to remove this masking and see how that color combination looks. Just carefully <laughs> trying to pull off our uh, our masking tape. Uh, the masking tape stuck to my tweezers, but here we go. And we can take off that final uh, piece of tape. We should have us a nice line here on our torpedo. That'll also be our reference line when we go to mount uh, the torpedoes uh, onto the sub. So that's, I like, kind of like the looks of that. So now we're going to use some flat steel testers enamel here. And we're going to use that uh, to paint the, uh, uh, the end of the torpedo here. I think that is the arming detonator. Uh, as the torpedo goes through the water, it arms, and then also we use it, uh, the steel color, on our twin propellers that are uh, on our submarines as well. And it does take a little bit of effort <laughs> to get in between these tiny, tiny uh, propellers, but uh, I think it's much easier to paint it this way than it would be to paint it separate and then try to attach it to the torpedo later because these are small propellers. We also have our propeller uh, that is on uh, the submarine itself and it calls for the steel color uh, for it as well. So we'll just paint that up. Now you do have to be very careful that you don't get that paint on our rudders because it is kind of close quarters there. Now here we have the uh, pale gray that we mixed up for our pre-shading. And we're going to be using that to come back in and kind of lighten up the, uh, the periscope. This top section of the periscope, uh, the painting diagram actually calls for it to be painted white. But I think maybe white's a little bit too bright for it. So going with the more subdued look that I'm, I'm looking for, uh, we'll just use the pale gray for that. It looks pretty good. And here we have some aluminum. Now this is a uh, Model Masters acrylic, a water-based uh, aluminum paint. And we're going to use that to paint this dome that's on the hatch. Uh, apparently it was a clear bubble uh, for our a midget submarine where the pilot could actually see out of it. And that's what they referred to uh, these submariners, uh, the one that's operating the sub, they actually called them pilots. They didn't call them uh, uh, skippers or captain or anything else. They were just called a, a pilot. So we're going to paint that dome up with that. So now we're going to give everything a good coat of this clear X-22. Now this is a gloss clear. And that gloss clear will give us a nice surface here to put our decals on. So here I've chosen the 365, I think it is, uh, to put on our sub. However, it does go over that uh, rear, whatever you call it, <laughs> fairing <laughs> uh, from the conning tower there. So I am going to trim the 5 off which I think it'll be much easier. We won't have to worry about it conforming and then the numbers bunching up together uh, as it goes around uh, that little uh, offset. So these are water slide decals. So I'm just going to use my tweezers here and suspend it in a little bit of warm water. And at this point, I've decided to use a little bit of this um, micro set uh, setting solution here for our decals and I do believe that this was a big mistake so normally we just take most of the water off of the decal and we kind of make sure that it will move around on the paper which means it's ready to apply and we just should slide that right off onto that micro set and it should uh, be okay 
Uh, but these are really, really, really thin uh, decals. I didn't realize how thin they were. And uh, the problem is the decal won't move and it's not lined up. And so I keep working with it here. I'm trying to adjust it, but it, it won't move. I can't even get a, a hobby knife up underneath the edge of it. And I'm trying to grab an, just a little bit of it and I try to peel it off. And it's, uh, it's kind of not working for me. So I try to go back and refloat it. And the micro set is just going to exacerbate the uh, entire operation. So with more fiddling and working with it, uh, what has happened is this decal has softened up with that little bit of uh, micro set that we used. And it just will not align. I can't... I can't get underneath it, so I decide once I tore it that we'll just try to take it off. And as you can see here, it didn't want to come off either. Uh, so I end up scraping this off, and it's still wet. <laughs> so that's kind of a problem there. So I do touch up the paint and everything, and now we've changed the number of our sub. We're going to the <laughs> next number that's available, which is the number 22 and now we're just going to use water so I put us a nice big bubble of water there uh, on the conning tower to slide that large number 22 uh, off and, it, and it's really thin you got to be really careful because this decal really wants to fold up on itself and it is so thin and so flexible uh, we just want to be careful and, and try to make sure that we line it up uh, the best that we can when we slide the paper out from underneath it. Uh, I do have a nice big bubble of water underneath it, so I'm able to move this one around and get it right where I think I want it to go. And just with a touch of a Q-tip or earbud, uh, that thing is down. That's just all there is to it. So I just roll over top of it, and that's kind of how we're going to have to go with this. Now, we do have the same issue uh, when it comes to the, uh, uh, the depth gauge on the, on the bow of the vessel. We've got to be really careful. Uh, these decals are so thin, and once, they, once the water or fluid gets out from underneath it, it is stuck. So once we let that dry, I give those decals a, a nice coat of the X22 uh, Gloss Clear again. And that's going to set us up for the next stage of the build, which will be using the panel liner from Tamiya. Now this is an enamel based panel liner. And we're going to use that to accentuate uh, all of this ribbing that is on the, outs uh, the exterior of the hull uh, and any of the other details. Um, I am having a slight flow problem here <laughs> with our uh, panel liner. It doesn't really want to run the way it's supposed to. Uh, that's probably due to the fact that it has an older bottle of uh, a panel liner. So since we're over top of an acrylic base, this enamel product is fairly easy to clean up. Um, I'm just using the cotton swab or earbud. Um, or cotton bud, depend upon where you're from and how you identify these. <laughs> uh, and we're just going to use this to trim down those uh, rather wide uh, swaths of uh, the panel liner that we've painted all over this thing. Um, we just want to get that down into a, something a lot more manageable and it looks much more into scale. As you can see, uh, it does work out for us. Uh, we're able to clean that up fairly easy. I mean, it, it, it really comes off really nice. So with that part done, uh, we're going to use that dividing line between the warhead and then the paint on the body of the uh, torpedoes. And we're going to go ahead and attach our torpedoes. And I'm just going to use to me extra thin for this. Uh, it just will flow right around those brackets there that hold our torpedoes into place. And then uh, 
we'll just go ahead and attach the uh, torpedo on the opposite side. I think the to me extra thin is going to be plenty strong to take care of that. So in order to allow uh, our torpedoes to dry, uh, the, the glue to dry, and set those into place, I kind of rigged up this little uh, <laughs> uh, drying stand so that uh, the torpedoes don't sag on us or move, and we'll just let that set up for a few minutes. Now we need to get rid of that really high gloss that we got going on there, and we're going to use this Model Masters Acryl. Uh, flat clear to do that. And we'll spray our entire sub with that. Next up, we're going to use this uh, isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol uh, to clean up our stand because we're going, to, we're going to want our stand to be a different color. Uh, we don't want it to be the same color as, uh, as our submarine is. And here I just put the alcohol into a small container here and I'm just using the uh, uh, the cotton bud here to really wet that up. Now alcohol is very aggressive when it comes to acrylic paints and uh, there's a lot of overspray since we <laughs> used our stand uh, as a painting jig more or less. So we're just going to rub that down and clean all that off so we have a nice clean surface to paint. And the color that I've chosen for our stand is this metallic black. I think that should give us a kind of a satin uh, look color. And that's uh, what we got. So I sprayed that and let it dry. And now we gotta, we gotta remove it from our craft stick with that double stick tape. And as you can see, it holds really well. There we go. So now that's removed. And uh, I think it looks really good. And I think it's a good contrast it can't be mistaken for an actual part of the submarine structure so I think it looks pretty good um, I'm kinda happy with that right there and with that I think I will call this build done kind of a therapeutic build for me it was pretty simple there was a total of like 42 parts uh, for the building of our midget submarine here uh, I think it looks really good considering uh, that it is so small. I mean, it's only six or six and a half inches. I think it's six and a half inches long. Uh, and there are some small fit issues with this uh, kit, but uh, it's nothing that somebody that's had a couple of models uh, under their belt that couldn't, uh, couldn't deal with. Test fit, test fit, test fit. Uh, you, you know, I say that so many times, and I even test fit the uh, industry standard kits like Tamiya that are supposed to fit so fantastically. However, you can find some Tamiya kits that don't necessarily fit all that well. So it's a, it's a good practice to get into, and it'll keep you out of trouble. Uh, I like to uh, also, with this kit, to... Uh, kind of experiment with our colors a little bit. I think adding that little bit of blue uh, to our medium gray looks good. I'm sure that the uh, original submarines uh, was a much darker color, but you got to remember with a, with a really small subject like this, um, if you paint it really dark, you will just end up with something that you can't see the detail on. So you're going to have to kind of lighten up those shades a little bit so that those details have the, uh, the ability to come out. And with that, guys, that's going to finish this build. Uh, special thanks to all my subscribers. It's because of you guys that I continue to uh, build these models and film them and put them out here for you to see. And if you are new to the channel and you like what you see, I hope today that I earned your subscription and if you also like this build uh, don't forget to give me a like I, I'd appreciate that and with that guys uh, all I can say is stay safe and I will see you guys in the next one